Hey guys, it's Howie, and uh, it's been a while, sorry, a lot of stuff happened. So what happened last time, well, I remember, I think I was doing my externship at the ICU, and I was a little upset because they didn't have a position for me. Sorry, there's a plane, I'm outside. Okay. Sorry, yeah, so there was a, uh, they didn't have any positions for me, and they, actually they did, but they weren't going to look for any new grad positions until April, and that was four months away, and I just couldn't wait that long, but I guess I really didn't have a choice, and so I got really frustrated. I had a good time working at the ICU. I learned a lot of things, and I would never take that back. In fact, it made me love working at the ICU even more. So those are the positions I'm going to be looking for, um, you know, once I get my license. The next thing is that I haven't, I didn't pay for the, uh, the, the board, the nursing board. I didn't pay to register. So I thought I just had to pay for the Pearson uh, to take the NCLEX, but I also had to pay the government, which is the registration board. So I didn't do that until about the end of my externship rather than before when my classmates had done it and um, when one of them reminded me say hey did you get your authorization to test your ATT yet and I said no I haven't gotten it yet maybe it got lost in the shuffle well it turned out that I had thought that I had paid it but I didn't it was the same fee it was about $200 for one board and $200 for the Pearson board or for the Pearson NCLEX and I must have figured out I must have thought that I had paid the government one rather than the Pearson one, and I just paid the Pearson one, so uh, not very good due diligence on my part. Um, I, I, I would, I'm not going to place the blame on, any, on anybody else but me, but I think that working uh, in the ICU was a little daunting, and I had just kind of, kind of let it slip my mind. Uh, anyway, my preceptor at the ICU was really nice, and she was sweet, and she, she said that she would be my referral if I needed to go uh, apply for a job which I definitely am. And so right now, I am still waiting. It's been about a month and a half uh, to be able to get my uh, authorization to test code so I can apply to take the board. So I can finally not just be a graduate student of nursing, but to also have the nursing uh, license. So, you know, getting a BSN, Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, doesn't really get you much <laughs> because you still have to, it just allows you to take the licensing board for the RN and that's what I'm waiting for. So, but that still didn't stop me from applying uh, for interviews and again, it took me about a month and it was a lot of waiting. Luckily, I already have my LVN license so I just used that to uh, apply and get jobs as an agency LVN, which means that I can work in different places, but only in the LVN capacity. And that was good because it gave me a chance to get exposed to different types of um, nursing settings like uh, long-term acute care, skilled nursing facilities, home health, hospice. Hospice is <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, legally, I can't pronounce anyone dead here in the state, but um, I basically pronounced people dead and it was um, it was really daunting but a good experience for me to actually see somebody die right in front of my eyes it was really kind of a little bit off-putting but most of the time the people that I was watching over I just try to make them as comfortable as I could with morphine and Ativan but you know there's there's still some annoyances uh, with a nursing field, even in hospice, even when people are just trying to die comfortably. Um, I guess with the opioid crisis, there's a lot of um, pushback uh, against Ativan, but in, um, personally, uh, just to be a little bit political here, I think having Ativan is not going to be detrimental for somebody who is dying. My whole purpose is to make this person comfortable so that they could pass away in the most dignified and comfortable way possible and I think I'm just you know the state's not letting me do that because of their hold on Ativan and other benzodiazepines and it's not even op an opioid but they are, they, I guess they're both controlled medications so 
um, having to talk to doctors and hospice agencies and pharmacies to try to get these medications available and secured for these dying people uh, was a task in and of itself. And so I think that that's something that I'm going to have to learn how to keep doing as a registered nurse. Um, also, I found that um, that dealing with people who uh, basically resent you for having a degree, you know, for for being in the position that you are. I mean, I've I've thought that nurses was always a an honorable and a uh, prestigious uh, career path, but I never thought of it as as com like you know like being a surgeon or. I don't know, whatever, so that, or like a lawyer or whatever. I, I think nurses aren't concerned with, you know, trying to claim that they're better than you. They're, we just have that, uh, we earn that right to be able to practice nursing um, at a higher capacity because we studied hard for it. We, we did a lot of sacrifice. We had a lot of sacrifices. And, uh, you know, some people just resent that, especially people who are older older than me and I'm not the youngest nurse out there not by far but there's people who resent uh, RNs who can do these things and it's you have to be I've, I've had to learn how to balance um, working with people and still be still having to say no so I can keep doing my job you know like when people ask me to do countless um, countless tasks that aren't below me because I'm never going to be below uh, you know, cleaning a bedpan or helping somebody go to the bathroom. No, I mean, the nurse's job is just to do all that. Um, but, and I'm not going to think that I'm better than anybody, but at the same time, I have my own job to fill. And if I have a choice between concentrating on giving my medications to the right person at the right time, right dose, all those rights, versus, you know, somebody who's like a CNA saying, oh wait, I need to turn this person, can you please help me? I will help the CNA. If I have nothing to do at that time, I will help the CNA or the LVN um, right away, no questions asked. But if I have stuff to do and like, you know, giving them medication or doing a procedure, I'm gonna have to tell them to wait. And uh, this, most of the time this pushback happens from uh, LVNs and CNAs that have worked there for a long time and they're not used to having somebody new and younger uh, be, not their boss, but you know, have have more privileges, and uh, I don't use that to put leverage over them because they're people. They work hard. I'm an LVN myself, you know, and and I know how much work has to be done. So it, it's just having to deal with that stuff, having a new, um, a different rank, a different um, a hierarchy, and people. I try not to, not to think of medicine as a hierarchy, but it kind of is. But I don't, I don't use my hierarchy, my nursing degree, to qualify myself better than anybody else. I just want to do my job, and I just think that the RN, BSN, or you know, just the RN position, whether or not you have a BSN, I think it's, um, it's a privileged job, and it's my privilege to be able to give compassionate care and care that is accurate and care that is meaningful to somebody. And uh, if I have to say no to a few people to do it, then I'm just gonna have to say no. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so uh, I was able to, um, having to wait to get take my nursing exam, my NCLEX ex exam is completely frustrating. Um, for a while, for about two weeks, I tried not to let it bother me, but I felt like a complete failure again which happens a lot. I don't know if you've watched the rest of the video. I felt like a complete failure. And I felt like all of my other classmates had moved on without me. And I felt like my nursing schooling was a complete waste of time because, you know, like I can't take this exam and I'm just twiddling on my thumbs. You know, what saved me is that the fact that I had an LVN license and I went actively looking for a job. And now that I'm making decent amount of money and, uh, you know, like I'm not in school every day. I can make, you know, back to the same amount of money I was making before I was even in school. So I'm okay rent-wise now. Just, I'm just so ready, you know? So now I'm just looking at this in-between time as a, as a time for me to um, relax, you know, from the whole years that I was in nursing school. 
for me to just kind of think about my career path and how I'm going to be a good nurse and most importantly testing for the NCLEX every day and I, I told myself I was going to keep doing it every day until I got my authorization to test but it's just so hard and I'm losing my knowledge you know my testing knowledge and uh, when I'm working as an LVN on other facilities I kind of forget my RN um, you know little facts like ABG readings and uh, what else and um, maternal I uh, maternity and OBGYN sections which are my weakest um, I'm very strong in my pharmacology section because as an LVN I, I pass meds as well so yeah if if you don't test every day your NCLEX your knowledge is gonna fall by the wayside and I tried I the Kaplan that was provided by our school had expired <laughs> it's been a month since I've graduated so now I don't have the Kaplan anymore, and I used to do all those questions every day, um, back to back. Um, but it's actually good not to be able to look at the same questions over and over again, because otherwise you're just memorizing answers. It's also good not to reread your notes, um, unless you know that that's your weak spot. Just systematically trying to read your notes from the beginning to the end is not only boring, but your mind's not going to retain it. So I know that testing is what's going to help me test. You know, it just makes sense that way. Uh, I tried to buy NCLEX Mastery and that was good too, but the questions were a little bit easier and plus I had I had started to go over a thousand questions and I was starting to see the same questions over and over so that wasn't going to help me. So I find, oh another thing about the NCLEX Mastery app is that you can do it anywhere because you can have it on your phone, plus there's a ranking system so you can see where you rank every time you answer your question. So it's nice to see you making progress compared to everybody else taking the test and finally I talked to some members and they recommended UWorld and I hear it all the time but $160 for just like 60 to 90 days of access plus two assessment tests isn't that much I mean sorry it's very expensive and so um, I, I didn't want to pay it up and uh, but I kept hearing good news about it on Facebook and from my classmates and so I asked one of my classmates for the password just to see what it looks like and you know what it actually looks legit the computer software is like Kaplan's which you know their software as well as well as Kaplan's mimics the NCLEX software and I'm not quite sure what the NCLEX RN software is because I'm still waiting to take the NCLEX RN but as an NCLEX um, LVN uh, testing exam which I assume is similar except for the, the content is that it does the software does look like it and so it's nice to be able to feel like you actually are taking the test but um, yeah so it's really good and um, I ponied up for it I ponied up $160 plus what else yeah um, the thing about it is is because it looks just like the same thing um, so I'm just gonna practice studying for it um, as if I was taking the exam so I can't do it like NCLEX Mastery and just answer tests mindlessly uh, test questions mindlessly while I'm on in front of the TV I have to actually sit in front of a quiet space um, and pretend like I'm at the testing facility and I'm at the testing area and really go through the 75 questions um, and then also build my endurance in case I need to go above 75 questions which is really daunting um, but uh, getting practice with uh, select all that apply questions and um, uh, mathematical questions like um, it's been a while but you know like I I forgot that you have to memorize like you know basic question equations like the Parkland formula I had forgotten about that um, yeah so that's my plan that's where I'm at <laughs> I'm enjoying life I know that once I get my RN oh I forgot to tell you, I got an email. Uh, oh, so the situation is, is that I have been trying to still apply, even though I don't have my nursing license, to apply for um, jobs at the ICU in critical care, and nobody was returning my replies. Um, I even applied to hospitals that weren't magnet hospitals. You know, I guess. You know, you have to pay your dues. <laughs> like if they, if they don't accept me, if the big hospitals that have the magnet status, there's so much competition. They say out of three thousand applicants, new grad applicants, just for one semester, 
um, they only accept like eight so it's really hard um, and I realized that I hate writing resumes and I have this huge resume because I've been working as a nurse for so long um, as an LVN so I have like a five page resume and I just plonked everything in there and I've just been keeping the same file over and over and so it basically reads like a novel and I thought after not having any replies I thought well maybe it's me and I hate to admit it but maybe I'm the one that needs to change so I went to a resume interview workshop and I talked to some of the human resources personnel and they discussed exactly what they're looking for for a resume basically they don't want a huge long resume but they want at the very top I mean I mean they care about your experience but the human resource personnel in nursing aren't the ones that hire you at least not in big organizations all they do is they screen resumes and check your background and then they they forward that to the nursing office that are looking for qualified new grads so they just want to make sure you're qualified and then they send it off and it's up to the nursing office and nursing managers to interview you and hire you and if nobody's qualified then they send it back to the human resources so the human resources personnel are actually there to help you uh, get a job and so they looked over my resume and said it's entirely way too long and I my summary um, of qualifications had nothing on it um, I thought the objective was like a hypothesis you know it <laughs> where or a thesis where you just had like a one sentence like I'm looking for this job bam that's it but in actuality, the human resources personnel says that you have to look at the job description that they're looking for in the job posting and in so many words, transcribe it to your resume because that's what they're comparing it to. If they're looking for a new grad student with less than, less than six months of RN experience and they want a, a new grad who is willing to work nights and weekends as well as days, uh, depending and um, also new grad personnel that are being willing to be precepted for six months to a year you know they want and who have a BLS ACLS for people who are applying for critical care positions and most importantly for people who have had externships um, and residencies in uh, the, the unit that they want to work at so because I had my externship from the ICU I put up I put that I changed my resume made it one page put that at the very top said hey I have experience as an extern in the ICU I have my BLS ACLS cards uh, ready and verified and current and I have less than six months of RN experience and you know all that so I, I matched whatever they put in the job posting to the top of my resume and cleaned it out just made it to one page you know just put two or three relevant positions to the ICU and um, also didn't lie you know I just put say hey you know still waiting to take my NCLEX and um, you know and put next to my name BSN but not RN so just put BSN graduated this time have uh, still waiting to take the you know pending uh, my RN so and then I got an email saying that I'm invited for an interview. So it wasn't until I cleaned up my resume that I got invited for an interview and now I am getting ready. So I will definitely talk about that later and uh, keep up and thanks for still tuning in with me. I appreciate you, um, you know, giving me compliments. Thank you, Busy B. You know, you, you're my role model. I'm al I've also started my nurse practitioner program um, and it wasn't as challenging for the first semester. So we'll see how I can balance being in a new RN and uh, going through nurse practitioner school at the same time. And uh, for my new subscribers, um, I really appreciate you, you know, like following me and um, I really hope this benefits you and I will talk to you guys later. Question me, I, send me questions and keep commenting. I love hearing from you guys and um, I hope the best in your nursing career. All right, see you later.